Well, what's up, y'all? I hope everybody is doing amazing out there. So, I am making a little video, and uh, I'm going to introduce you in just a minute to the girls, the hot chicks that we got. A bunch of hot chicks on the property, 10 of them to be precise. But uh, as you can see in the thumbnail, one is my favorite. It's little baby Pickle. Now, Pickle is, uh, I've been spending a lot of time with her and uh, just picking her up and, and talking to her. And yeah, she's a little lover. The rest of them, not so much. Um, but uh, I am working on the chicken coop today. Um, Regina has this idea in her head that somehow she would like to make the chicken pr or the chicken coop and the run uh, bear proof. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that um, without having a tank or some, some something to back it up or like chain link fence, but I don't have that right now. So I am going to dig at the bottom of the chicken coop, raise it up a little bit, put some four by sixes in there and then lay screen on the ground so that uh, no raccoons or foxes or what have you can dig underneath. And uh, yeah, but let's go beat those chicks. Here we go. What's up little dude? There. Come on, babies. Come on, baby girls. Hi. See that white one right there? That's standing up. That's Pickle. And then, uh, so we have three Brahmas. There's one. That's Pickle. That one is Norton. And then there's one back there. Uh, her name is Turtle. And as far as the rest of them, now, Regina, I sent Regina over to the feed store. Come here, Pickle. I sent Regina over to the feed store to go pick up a bunch of Brahmas because they're good egg layers, they're nice temperament. Um, and she went crazy on the rest of them. So like I said, she got three Brahmas. That one, that one, and then over in the four. The rest of them are Silkies and Frizzles. Now, they're cute. They're kind of fluffy and weird, like this one. Uh, I don't know the names of the rest of them because uh, the kids have all named them and Regina's named them. That black one over there, she is, I'm assuming it's a she. That's another thing she forgot, Regina, is that uh, the frizzles and the silkies were straight run. So we're not entirely sure what they are. It's either the female or a rooster in there somewhere. But uh, yeah. These are the new addition to our family. Very exciting, very exciting. We are moving forward. And as far as updates on the property, um, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, so let me go back to a couple months ago. A couple months ago, uh, December, we, again, we've been submitting and re. Uh, revising and submitting and revising and submitting our permit to the county, having to bring it back to the engineers and then have them revise it, send it back to the county only for the county to change their mind. The problem is, is we have, there's been so many people in the county that have either quit or moved on to new positions or whatever. But the fact is, is that every time we resubmit, it goes in front of another person. They have no idea what we're talking about. They have no idea as far as where we've come on the property, uh, where we're coming in this permit, or how long we've been doing this permit. So that's been very, very frustrating. But uh, we did contact the county last week because the last time we revised anything was in December. We submitted in January per their deadline. The messed up thing with uh, the county is that they always put us on a deadline, but there is no time limit to what they do or when they do it or how they do it so like I said we did talk to the county they said that our most sub or most recent submittal will be um, basically gone over or reviewed on uh, this coming Monday so tomorrow and Tuesday and then they'll get back to us now fingers crossed this is this is going on over two and a half years um, come October, it'll be three years since we submitted this application. And just, this isn't even to build our house. This isn't even a building permit. 
what this is is actually to continue the driveway up um, to where or the driveway ends and then continue the driveway over to the piece where we're actually going to build the house and then clear the land so it's uh, bringing down trees but the big thing is crossing over a little seasonal creek it's like uh for some reason they think or they're treating it as if uh it's some kind of giant salmon run that comes through there but the fact is, is that you know at its high point it's only two maybe two inches deep and about a foot and a half maybe two feet across but that all being said this is what we're doing um we are in the middle of refinancing the property um the gentleman that we purchased the property from jim uh we did an owner financing at the very beginning and that three years is coming up we thought that we would be or we would have already built by now and that would have converted the owner financing to a solid long-term 30-year mortgage but it just didn't happen um we do have uh, a couple institutions that are giving us uh, pretty good ideas. One is 15 years, because typically on land, you typically, not 100%, but typically you're not gonna get a 30 year uh, mortgage on land, just land. So we did find an institution that does 15 years and then an institution that does 20 years. And preferably we'd like to stick with the 20 years uh, because it brings us payments down <laughs> and uh, hopefully our, we can lock in an interest that is somewhat low uh, in this economy. It's uh, kind of far-fetched, but, you know, we have to do what we have to do for now. We can always refinance again later. But, um, go on, Bailey. Bailey's back there. What? You can see he's orange. Yeah. One of our uh, sons, 13-year-old Liam decided he was going to uh, dye him multiple colors um, predominantly orange spots and give him he gave him eyebrows green eyebrows and <laughs> Bailey doesn't know any different he don't care but uh, anyhow that's what's going on with the property um, work is good and uh, staying pretty steady and you know what it is a beautiful beautiful day in uh, western Washington in the foothills of the Cascades. Now, if you guys remember um, the actual the sweat, sweat, sweat lodge that I built, we've been doing sweat quite a bit. I, I've been doing sweat quite a bit. And uh, I have to say after, you know, quite a few years of being away from the sweat lodge and just, you know, becoming occupied with life and uh, for the most part making excuses for why I can't go to ceremony or you know whatever I have to say that uh, it's a blessing to be able to get back in there and um, pray real hard and uh, really look within myself and all the different things in myself that I know that I can change or better I mean honestly when it comes down to it one of the things as us as men need to recognize is that no matter how much that you think that you've learned throughout your life you should be constantly trying to better yourself for the rest of your life up until the day that you pass on to the next world you should be learning better ways on how to better yourself and become a better man for not only yourself first but for your family and the reason i say yourself first is because if you can't be right within yourself, you can't be solid and contained and and uh, competent and you know all the things that consist of being a righteous man, which is not a good, it's not a bad thing. Then you can't do that for anybody else, right? You can't. I mean, I can't be all dysfunctional and wacko and have all kinds of problems and not be able to contain you know aspects of myself that are not necessarily beneficial and then try and be in a relationship so that's what the sweat lodge does it helps with me it helps me with self-reflection helps me with prayer it helps me kind of push the reset button and uh, start off on a new path and um, walk forward the best that i can with my head raised high and uh, a clear plan in effect but uh, i'm gonna end this for now i'm gonna get on that chicken coop i know 
I'd probably film it, but honestly, I don't think you guys want to watch that. It's uh, kind of goofy, but uh, I wanted to put this out just so you guys knew what was going on uh, out here on the property and, and uh, that we're still alive, we're still kicking, we're still pushing through. You know, three years later, at the very beginning, I said that I was not gonna give up. The county, the county is definitely pushing they are they are trying my patience they've been trying my patience but i'm not going to give up on this we have one of the most beautiful properties as far as i'm concerned in all of existence and it, there may be beautiful places out there but this is this is us this is what we deserve this is where we deserve to be myself and my family so like i said i'm going to end this for now as always I've got nothing but love and blessings for each and every one of you out there and all of your families. And I hope you guys are enjoying this weekend. And I hope that, I just hope so many good things for each and every one of you, not only in the, in the United States, but all the people that watch overseas across the pond. I send love and blessings and prayers to each one of you. And, uh, what dude? What? What? What, dude? Anyhow, until next time, I'm Dusty. This is Fox Holler Homestead. This is Fox Holler Homestead. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.